currencies, global markets, and live forex trading charts. These are some of the things that come to mind when you think about forex. And in line with that, I'm joined by a young and determined entrepreneur who's also the CEO of Paris FX Sport Company, Paul Mugenda Mwangi. Karibu sana. And thank you for making time to speak to us today. Okay. It's a pleasure. First of all, I'm challenged by how young you are and you know how much you've been able to accomplish, so kudos for that. Okay, and let's get to understand, first of all, what is Forex and who are some of the major players involved in this industry? Okay. Uh, Forex, uh, I can say, is a simultaneous buying and selling of currencies. Uh, we have major players in the market. Uh, we have the interbanks. Uh, we have the, the retail traders like us. Also, we, had the, we have the hedge funds companies. Mm -hmm. yeah, these are the main uh, players in the market. So for those who are wondering maybe what is a hedge fund company, what okay. do they do? Okay, okay. Uh, a hedge fund company is an institution that manages public money. They collect money from uh, institutions, mm -hmm. from individuals. They, they put that money on a certain pool and then they trade that money. Now, uh, the, 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 the profit that they get at the end of the month, they share according to your investment to its mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just getting to trade with you on behalf of a yeah, client yeah, who's yeah, come. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. And your background is in actual science, right? Yeah, yeah, At the yeah. Technical University of Kenya. Yeah. So I'm wondering what is the link between actual science and now what you're currently doing right now in Forex trading? Okay. Uh, actual science is a subject that deals with the risk. Uh, it deals with the uh, reservations, reservation of funds. It also deals with investments. So, uh, back in my campus, uh, I had to learn some techniques in risk management, which I apply in my forex trading career. Mm -hmm. so, so, there are a lot of things that uh, you, you, you learn from school, from actual science, that you apply into forex trading. One of them being risk management. The other one being reserve. As a trader, you have to have a reserve. You have to know how to calculate your reserve. You have to have a, a trading model. Mm -hmm. And all that uh, I learned it from actual, from actual reserves. So when you say a reserve, what do you mean by a reserve? A reserve is money that is put aside yes. to, 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 to cater for, for, for a certain loss. Mm -hmm. In case maybe you lose your money today, at least you have a reserve to, to compensate. Mm -hmm. That pool of money. Yeah. So even in, in regards to forex, you need to have a reserve because yes, you're yes, bound yes. to make losses. Yes, yes, yes. And I think we need to address also one um, very common assumption that people have. Most okay. people fear forex. You okay. will go to maybe NSC and see the live charts. So okay. you're wondering, this looks so complicated. Okay. So how how simple or, or difficult was it for you? And what do you have to say uh, regarding that? Okay, forex. What I can say is not simple. And on the other side, it's a simple subject if you know how to do it. So a lot of people fear Forex because uh, they put in money in their accounts and they start trading, but they don't know what they're trading. The good thing about Forex is that uh, even if you don't, even if uh, maybe you don't have the, 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 the full skills on, on how to do the trades, there's something we call risk management. You can be able to control your money so you can't lose all your money. So you, you have to have skills for, for you to understand how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so it's all yeah. about skills and also experience, it's, maybe? Yes, it's all about skills, experience, and mostly risk management. Because if you open a position, one position can make you lose all your money. But in, if you know how to use risk management, it will, it will help you not to lose your money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how old is Paris FX? Uh, it's around 2.5 years. Two and a half years. Yeah. But they, I think we, are, we have two birthdays today. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yours and yeah. for the company. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but now let's get to uh, just talk about your journey. I think uh, if, you, if you have not read about Paul Mugenda, you will know that his journey is a very difficult journey. Yeah. All the way through campus and getting to successfully start and run yeah. your own company. So just tell us about that journey and how you were able to transit uh, from a campus student okay. into the CEO of your company? Uh, myself, uh, I came to Nairobi back in 2013 December. Uh, after Christmas is when I came to Nairobi. Yes. Uh, I used to stay with my aunt at Kidorai. So life was not that simple because uh, I was preparing for school to join uh, Technical University on January for a parallel course. So um, I started hustling while in Nairobi. I started doing tea leaves business. I started doing tea leaves business. Could buy uh, the tea leaves packaged from Moranga, then come sell them at Gedorai. 
So most of us targeting the 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 the, the, the our town you know, talk kazi yes. you know, So I did my business, but uh, doing uh, hooking business, you can't grow. So I didn't like my job. So uh, when I joined campus, uh, I started looking for alternatives. So I could walk to certain uh, insurance companies asking for jobs, but we couldn't end on a new tapigi wasim. So I was very discouraged. So I decided to 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 to, to go to insurance hotel in Kenya, Britain, Kenya, in India, Explico, direct try. So you had to find your own means to make it through campus, right? Yes, yes. So yes. from there, what else did you do? Ah. Uh, I went to an insurance company by the name Ken India. Then uh, I met this person by the name Muli. Uh, he advised me, he asked me whether I do, I, I know how to do the insurance business. And I said yes. So I had no crew. <laughs> so he started uh, mentoring me. Uh, I can inform us how to sell the policies, the insurance, uh, those, the insurance plans, fire insurance, life, general. So I started marketing them. Started marketing the policies. Started marketing the policies. Uh, eventually, in Kansa, Kansa, I started a business. Happen a party. Three six one a course. I get to come at twenty thousand per month. Yes. Out of what I've done, the work I've done. But uh, selling policies is a is a very difficult job. So it needed in a takanga to work on a lot of uh, passion. Now you, you, you don't give up easily, you give up mm -hmm. easily. Right? So Nikauza, then Nikiwa Tukwa Yoshubin, I met a guy who was an Indian. He was traveling to Paris, Kenya, he was a business person. So he taught me how to do the business, though not that willing. You free, you can click on this link, do this, do this, do this. Then I started asking questions, how do we analyze the market? So he showed me how to analyze market, but I didn't want to use it. So a lot of things I did a lot of research. So I started uh, trading on a demo account. Then I was I was going to get a profit. So sometimes I was going to get a lot of money. I was going to get a risk management plan, how to, 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 how to do the risk management. Then I was going to get a so I, I had a, I, I did a request to him, come on, be and say dinner pesa to start. Mm -hmm. So he gave me 300 USD. So I opened an account, an equity account. I deposited the, it was around 33,000. Yes. Which is equivalent to 300 USD. Then I started trading. I did trade, I traded for like two days, another day I lost everything. How, that, how did how did he react? Because he trusted you with the money, <laughs> then yeah. you lost it. So I lost all the money. Uh, then I can go back to Mumbai, but I can't do a lot of logins. So he called me. He asked me, "Paul, how is trading?" He told me, "Trading is fine. Um, I'm still at a level. I'm trading. I'm making pesa kidogo. Can I be? Are you sure?" Kambia, eh, but ni mes kidogo. Can I be? You just mes kidogo. You mes kina pesa yote. So the 300 USD was gone. So I started doing demo again, but uh, he taught me something on the economic calendar. He told me, he advised me, anytime that we have, uh, anytime you see the, the economic news approaching, yes. make sure you have your stop loss ready, make sure you, you have, you, you have uh, your trade is not open with no stop losses. So I learned a lesson. So I started trading demo again. Then I convinced him that I'm now going mm -hmm. to go. So it's so, actually important to, to trade with a demo account first before yes, you go into the real yeah, thing? Yeah, because you, you get to learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and it's good you learn uh, those things via demo account more than a, a, a real account. So he gave me 500 USD. Actually, he, didn't, he told me he has given me a loan. So I started trading carefully with Yogopa. So, kwa hii pesa, hindi napata kwa insurance, sometimes I was getting a drawdown. Na fika 70,000, na rudi 40. So, I started topping up with what I'm getting from the insurance side. Mm -hmm. So, I did business, I did the business for around three months, then it started picking. Started picking, I started, um, 
hadi mboma ni uh, tukaanza kufanya pia na biashara na nituma mahali na nipea like 20,000 so nika jipata I'm topping the business up then I started getting a lot of clients for insurance so napata yu pesa na invest hapa mm -hmm. then uh, siku jua nika jipata tu so that, yeah, that is open how office, yeah, I open an office in West Trans uh -huh. then uh, after that office in West Trans I open another one in town then now I'm still growing. Yes. Yeah. So I'm curious about the name. Why Paris Company? You know? Now, uh, this guy, uh, he, he, he travel in Kenya to then he ended up France, Paris. Uh -huh. So I can be up and there are a lot of stories about Paris. So I love the name. So that's the reason uh, I decided to call my company Paris. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, there there's um, so many other things that you can do in, in, once you were experienced in Forex, right? Okay. And you also have a mentorship program that yeah, you're doing in yeah, that line. So yeah. what exactly are you doing about the mentorship program? Mentorship uh, is more of uh, maybe advising my clients when to execute a trade. If I'm doing a trade, I tell them it's time now to take the trade and they get something. So if I post some charts there, analyzed charts, they will be able to learn. That's what, that's what we call more of mentorship. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's very nice that you're training young people to actually, yeah. you know, learn how to deal in forex. Yeah. And what is the future like for Paris? Do you intend to maybe have it? I uh, want to have a hedge fund company. I want to have a licensed uh, company where I collect money from public. Then uh, I invest it in forex markets and real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there any other company like that in Kenya? Or? Uh, I don't know of any licensed company. The only companies I know, the investment company, they are most trained to real estate, not forex trade. Mm. Yeah. So it will be maybe the first of its yeah. kind. And I'm sure there are many Kenyans out there who have been duped into investing their money in all these uh, so-called uh, forex trading uh, okay. firms. So if I want to invest in forex, what are some of the checkpoints I can use to distinguish one company that's licensed and one that is not licensed? Oh, you can check from CMA site, website, you'll get to see the licensed companies. Yeah. So that's uh, CMA is the Capital Market Authority? Yes, cap yeah, Capital Market Authority. So what is the role of that particular body? In the that is to regulate uh, financial institutions in Kenya, mostly the, 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 the forex sector. Mm -hmm. So they license the brokers, yeah. Okay, so it's all all things forex is yeah. CMA. Yeah. Okay. So that they deal with also stocks. Most people doing stocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and investments. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's also a very interesting analogy that works in forex. You okay. know, for it's an online uh, uh, field. Let me see. So uh, unlike other online jobs where the more participants, the fewer you know the money is. Okay. In Forex, the more people you have trading, yeah. the more money there is. So yes. how how does that analogy work? You know, when you have a lot of people trading, uh, uh, the market becomes the market is more volatile because maybe people are doing sell, the other people are doing buy. So the market is active since there is a lot of participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the more the people, the better it is. Because now that the market starts moving. Yeah. So you stand a higher chance of getting even yeah. greater profit margins. Okay, and what is the maybe future of Forex in Kenya? Do you see like something that is is sustainable first of all okay. and to grow in the next few years? Or what does the future look like for Forex? No, the problem with the Forex uh, in Kenya, mm. a lot of people are into business. Some are genuine, some are not. So you get people collecting money from the public, uh, promising very high return. Eventually, uh, they go out and out with people's money. So people should be aware of such, first such institutions. Like I remember, there's a the, 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 there's a there's a company which I will not mention. Uh, came up, came in Kenya. Started people started confusing people to invest money with them. They do Bitcoin, they do forex. Eventually, they, 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 they close the asset and go. Yeah. So, but um, forex, those people who understand it, have a good future in Kenya because the market is still there. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and up to where you are, would you say networking has played any role maybe in helping you progress? Uh, not really because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of money that uh, I get, I get from trading. So maybe networking, maybe for other business, because a lot of people know me in forex sector. But um, those uh, clients that I get, 
was there they helped me maybe to get insurance business or rather side hustles there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And maybe as we wind up, yeah. uh, what are the um, maybe some of the farms that I can get into if I want to get into forex or maybe have been studying, you know, using demos and getting okay. to know how the market operates. What farms would you advise me to maybe get internship with? Okay. Uh, internship or trading? Uh, trading, yes. Trading. Trading, yes. trading, you know, once we come to trading, uh, those farms are called brokers. In Kenya, I think uh, we have EGM securities. Uh, you can use offshore brokers like IC markets. You can yeah. use Techmail. Yeah, you can use uh, Paperstone. Yeah, those are the other, some of the brokers that I can recommend. Mm, okay, yeah. and maybe you, yourself, I could also come to you and. <laughs> My, myself, uh, I'm a detailed trader. I okay. also have a company that I help the students maybe to learn. Maybe if you want to learn, I can teach you and then I mentor you. Mm -hmm. you start trading on your own. Okay. Yeah. And it's a very commendable work that yeah, you're doing and yeah. you know raising young people yeah. to trade and become maybe even bigger than you have yeah. been able to achieve. So as we finish off, what is a word of advice for somebody who wants to get into Forex first of all okay. and somebody else who's wondering what career path do I choose? Uh, I can tell them to learn Forex and uh, first thing you are so many so first they understand the business, then they do the business. Very interesting. I think yes. I will just end it there. Yeah. Understand the business, then do the business. Yes. Thank you so much, Paul. Okay. It's Sorry. a pleasure, yeah. and I'm sure you're an encouragement to so many other young people out yeah. there who yeah. are. But then he's 24 and it's his birthday. Yeah. But yeah, so happy belated birthday. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much, Paul, and it's been a pleasure. Welcome back to Elimuni Nguvu. In case you're just joining us right now, today it's all about money matters. And as you can see, I'm joined by a young man who has studied a professional course called SIFA, which in full is Certified Investment and Financial Analyst. Karibu sana. And thank, thank you for making time to speak to us today. So first of all, let's get to know who you are and what you're doing. My name is Moraga Timobe. I'm a lecturer at Traction School of Governance. I teach finance and uh, financial accounting in Traction School of Governance. And currently, I'm also pursuing a course in investment known as CIFA. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching and studying at the same time? Yeah. Very commendable. You should actually try that yourself. So let's get to understand what is CIFA all about? Okay. CIFA in full is Certified Investment and Financial Analyst. This is a course that you do if you aspire to work in the financial industry maybe as a portfolio manager, as an investment manager, and so, and also maybe if you want to do financial analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are some of the career options that you have if you actually do CIFA. Yeah. And what uh, are the requirements that I need for me to do CIFA? Because maybe the people who assume that uh, with, with, a, with a degree or a certificate course in finance, or maybe BCom, then you don't really need to do CIFA, which is the professional course. So why should I do CIFA? and not just rely on my degree or certificate. Okay, answering your first question is that you have asked the, uh, the qualifications you need to pursue CIFA. Yes. For you to do CIFA, you require a mini grade of C+, plus in mini grade in KCSE, C+, plus in mathematics, and C+, plus in English. Then from that, you can, you can pursue CIFA from section 1 up to section 6. You don't require any other qualification for you to do CIFA. If you only have those requirements, you can actually do CIFA. Mm -hmm. And does it also help you maybe be updated in terms of the trends that are there in the, in the field or, you know, what exactly is entailed in this professional course? One, CIFA en ensures that you learn all the areas in investment. Uh, it has different sections, it has different uh, units that you cover. So once you do CIFA, you are able to do all that pertains to investment. So CIFA is a cost tailored to even, even with the upcoming trends, you can be able to handle them with ease. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you have done the CIFA. And you've said there are six sections, right? Yeah. So would you give us a breakdown of maybe what is there in section one, section two, all the way to section so, six? So uh, we have all the six sections from section one to section six. Yes. Each section has, has three units. So, so you, when you pursue CIFA, you do 
18 units in total. So those sections are divided into parts. We have part one, part two, and part three. So if you want to do CIFA, you can complete your course within the one and a half years if you combine the sections. So if you do section one and two, that is part one. You can do it within six months if you combine. Section three and four, you can combine it to do it as part two within the next six months. And uh, within one and a half year, you'll be through with your CIFA course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yourself, you've reached to what level? I'm currently in part three, section five. Uh -huh. And so far, would you say you've had fun with the course, you know? Or given the chance, would you actually change and do something else that is not CIFA? No. For me, CIFA is my option. Is I chose it even when I had other courses. But I believe CIFA has the right things that I am taught that enables me to maneuver in my day-to-day -day world and also to pursue my future career as an investment analyst. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing now to prepare yourself? Because maybe somebody is wondering, you've done the course in Section 6, so what next? You know, you're going out into the market, so what do I do as a student of SIVA maybe to prepare myself to get into the market? So you have to get the practical experience. In school mostly you learn the theory bit, but so as a student, maybe once you break, you may do maybe seek an internship maybe in an investment bank so that you can learn about the what happens in the real world. You can also trade the shares maybe yourselves. You can go to the security exchange using a, one of the brokers that maybe with the brokers that we have in the market and maybe start trading the shares by yourself by the, the knowledge you get in CIFA. Mm -hmm. Have you actually tried it yourself? Yeah, I have done it. And you've, you've made losses, you know, gains? Okay, in investment, yeah. uh, we always aspire to get profits, but at times you get losses. But if you have a good knowledge, you try and try and minimize the, those losses and then try and maximize the profits. Mm -hmm. And what bodies are there maybe in uh, the context of CIFA and you know, investment uh, analysis? What bodies are there maybe to help you uh, function better in this field? Okay, we have the ECIFA body, that is Institute of Certified Financial Analyst. Yes. That is an institute that uh, protects the rights of the financial analyst in the world, in, the, in Kenya. So if you are, have pursued your CIFA up to Section 6, you are able to be registered under that body and that one protects your, your interest as a financial analyst. Mm -hmm. So you actually advise somebody to join that body? Yeah. Are you a member yourself? No, because I have not oh, you completed. Have not, yeah, you have not completed. Yeah, so I have not registered with them. Oh, okay. okay. And maybe what uh, advice do you have for somebody who is wondering what career do they choose? First of all, was this your own choice? Or was it something that uh, maybe was chosen for you by your parents or somebody else? So me, my parents, once they sent me to the university, I went and pursued economics. But once I was there, I realized my, my strength is in finance, and that is why I chose CIFA myself. Mm -hmm. So it was a personal decision, you actually? Yeah. Yes. And what advice do you have for somebody who is choosing uh, a career? So they're wondering what career do I settle on? Okay, CIFA is one of the best courses when it comes to investment. Once you do CIFA, you, there are so many career options out there. For example, in Nairobi Security Exchange, we have introduced new, new commodities like the, the derivatives. We are yes. trading the futures in the Nairobi Security Exchange. That is one of the platforms that CIFA guys can work on. Secondly, you can also work in Capital Markets Authority. That is, where, that is a market regulator of the, in the field of finance. You can work there. You can work in also in Central Depositor and Settlement Scheme, the CDS, and you can also work in investment banks and also as portfolio managers in companies. Mm, so it's a, wide, a very wide field, right? Yeah. So you have heard this from Timothy himself, a student of CIFA. You need to do this course if you are in the field of finance. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. Asante sana, Timothy. Asante. And thank you for making time to speak to us today. Thank you so much. If there is anything I've learned today, never ever go for fast money. Take your time and learn all the ins and outs of any business before you actually go into it. That marks the end of this week's episode of Elimuni Nguvu. But remember, the conversation continues and you can reach out through our Facebook page, Elimuni Nguvu, and tell us what careers we'd like to learn about. And we will highlight them right here on Elimuni Nguvu. My name is Priyati Mokuhe, and I will see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m.